Hey guys, so this is the uh, second video I think of my artificial intelligence prologue series. If you haven't seen the first video, please watch that one first because I won't be covering any of the basics. Um, yeah. Uh, in this video, we're going to be using the Eclipse um, prologue compiler a lot. It comes with a GUI, which I'll be using, and a command line. Uh, it isn't to be mistaken with the Java development environment, it's very different. Um, I'll put a link in the description if, uh, if I remember. If I forgot, then please someone let me know um, so first things first uh, let's talk about lists so a list is just a collection of elements so um, in prolog you can write it with square brackets so then inside here you could have like a b c d whatever uh, the comma just separates the elements right now what you can also have is something like this a b and then a bar and then like a variable at the end now what this means is that we have A first, we have B, and then we can have one or more elements and they can be whatever they want because we have a variable there, right? So um, if we have A, B, X, and we're trying to check and see if these two are equal, then X will map to a list C, D. Because this bar means that there are one or more elements happening after, um, w whenever x gets assigned its its value, it's always a list of whatever comes whatever comes after the bar. Um, so even if it were just a b c, and we had bar x, then x should evaluate to a list of c. Now what bars can also do is they can eliminate a list uh, but only one so if we have something like a b c uh, d again um, we change it up a little bit we do like a b bar c d then this is actually equal to this they're the same list and that's because when you simplify when you evaluate this you this bar here can eliminate one list that comes after it so it will take out the list here and it will turn into a comma which will turn it into this it will turn it into this list so we're going to go into that a little bit further we're going to be doing a lot of matching today um, to give you a bit of a visual idea of what happens with a bar uh, let's say you have some list right and you have some elements in it we don't know how long this list is at all it could go on forever if it really wanted to so in a regular list you would define like a b c d we know that that's our list for sure absolutely now what adding a variable at the end means is that we could have some constant a at the beginning and then a bar would represent the rest of the elements a variable can represent a list, right? So that means that this would be equal to like B, C, D in this case, right? Because it's the whatever remains in the list. If you're familiar with linked lists, you could see this variable as being a tail. And we'll be doing a type of uh, a recursive list in the next video. So you'll see all about that in the next one. All right, so here I have a list of examples that we're gonna put into Eclipse. Uh, and what we're doing is we're just checking to see if these are equal so we're going to see if like this list is equal to this list now the first step in doing so is simplifying what we have so if our list looks a little complicated then we'll simplify it as much as we can and then we'll do the equality so let's look at this first example here I don't think we can simplify this any further these look pretty simple now what will these map to so we have a variable x here x will be equal to a uh, then we have y y will be equal to b but then we have a bar ah oh, shit what does that mean uh, so we have a variable z at the end and remember when I had Microsoft Paint open we talked about how z represents just whatever's left in the list it's one or more elements in the list but it always matches to a list of the rest of the elements of the list so in this case we have a b c d z will match to c and d but because it's after a bar it will match to a list of C and D. So let's just copy this and paste it into Eclipse. 
We'll run that so we're correct and everything matches properly. Okay, so that example is done. Let's take that out. All uh, right, this next one, again, looks pretty simple, but I think we could simplify this further. And in doing so, we're actually gonna match it completely. So remember what I said about bars being able to remove uh, one list that comes after them. If we had something like this, then these wouldn't match because mm -hmm. it can only take out one of the lists, right? So we're only doing one list for now. And uh, then after that, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys what happens with, uh, with something like that. All right, so uh, if we simplify this, we can take out the list, right? Take that out, and then this bar becomes useless. So then we can just replace it with a comma, and boom, they're equal. So if I control Z, that does not work. Okay, there we go. Paste that. We run it. Yep, they match because they're the same list, right? So now if we do this next example here and we simplify this, we can take out the first list, but then we end up with this. Now this does not match because this is a list inside a list and a list is one element. It's like it counts as one object. And here we have four objects. We have four constants inside this list. And in this one, we only have three. We have A, we have B, and then we have a list of C and D, which counts as one object. So this won't pass. Um, if we uh, if we put this into prologue, you'll see what I mean. So let's copy this, let's paste it, whoops. Run that, so no, they don't match, right? Because when it simplifies down, it just it's not the same list, you can't do that. All right, next example. This one's a bit tricky. Uh, this one deals a lot with removing lists after bars. So let's take a look here. We have MTH110. Uh, then we have a list after a bar, so then we can take that out. So we end up with just MTH210, another list after a bar. We can end up with CPS35, and then we have CPS721. Uh, this part is important. See how this is uppercase? That means that this is a variable. This isn't a constant anymore. And when you have a variable after a bar, it becomes very important. It becomes relevant, right? So you can't take the bar out in this case. CPS 822 because CPS 822 can be uh, any number of elements and that's very important for matching, right? So that's going to be our simplified list here. Now we can check our equalities. So P is going to map to MTH 110. R is going to map out to MTH 210. Uh, Q is going to map out to CPS 305. And then AI is going to map out to a list of whatever's left in our list. So what's left in our list is this. So AI will be equal to a list of what's left. Okay, so let's double check this in prolog. We'll run that and yep, everything looks good. On to the next. This one is tricky. All right, so let's take a look. Simplification, simplification. Yeah, so this first, uh, this left list can be simplified. Because we have a list after the bar, again, it can be removed. So we have list, comma, list, A, B, C. And now we're testing the equality here. So list has a capital L, it means it's a variable. So list will be equal to the empty list on our right side here. Um, Z will be equal to list. Now these are variables, right? So Z will assume the value of list since we've already signed it. So Z will also be equal to the empty list. Um, and then we have U. U will map to whatever is left in our list. So we've only mapped this part here. What we have left is A, B, and C. So you will map to the list A, B, C. Let's take a look. Let's run that. And yep, everything looks in order. All right. Okay, so uh, let's do this one. This one, mm, this one's tricky. All right, so this first part doesn't look like it can be simplified, but the second part can. 
So let's take a look at that. So we'll start off with Z. Z has a bar which is followed by a double list. So that means that we can only take out one of those lists. Um, right. So in doing so, the bar gets removed. So then we end up with A in there, and then another bar here. Now this bar has a list of B afterwards. So we can take that list out. We end up with that. And then we have bar W. So that should be our simplification. We'll double check in Eclipse, but I'm pretty sure that's right. OK, so U will map to Z. And now we have a list here that's trying to map to this list. So that means that W will properly map to A. And then we have U again. U is already equal to Z, which means that U is equal to Z. Now both will be equal to B. Uh, but that will be... That should be a list of B, I believe. Um, ba, ba, ba. And then we have bar W. W has already been assigned. So normally, if W had not already been assigned, these would match because we would just say that W is equal to a list of A, B because that's what's left in our list, right? But since W is already assigned here, it can only be assigned to once. So W is equal to A forever, forever. We can't change that. So when we try to reassign it to a list of A, B, that's when it fails. So prologue's going to say that this failed. It's not going to work. So let's try this out. We run it, and we were right. So it doesn't match. I'll take that one out. OK, so let's try this one here. <laughs> All right, so that left part doesn't simplify, but this right part can simplify. So I'm actually just going to copy this. I'm going to paste it uh, here we see that we have a list after a bar. So we can take that out. As a result, that gets taken out. OK, so that's that looks simplified to me. All right, so lowercase k will match to lowercase k. They're the same constant, so that's great. Uh, p will match to w, so we'll say the variable w is equal to p. And then we end up with, we have u. u will be equal to a list. u will be equal to this, because that's the remainder of our list here. Now, since w has been mapped to p, u will be equal to this. That's what it should equal to. So these actually, uh, yeah, these match. These match properly. Um, so let's put this in prolog and see what it says. Yep, they match. And yeah, everything looks in order. Everything looks good. Last example. Sorry, the video is, uh, is a bit long. My first recording of this was over 20 minutes. <laughs> so I spent uh, almost an hour just recording this video so far. Oh, man. Um, but I was wrong a lot in the first recording, so I've, I've mastered it more or less in this one. Uh, okay, so last example, and then we're home free. Uh, oh yeah, simplification. Okay, so it looks like both sides can be simplified. So we'll do the left side first. We've got a little bit more space now, so I'll make some room there. So we have K, then we have a list of Q, and then we have a bar, so we can remove that list. So we end up with Q, L, M, and then we have tree, and then another bar with a list afterwards. So we can remove that bar, we can remove the list. And then there's a variable after that Z, so, or after that bar, so we end up with that. Okay, and then we'll do the right side. All right, so this one should be a little bit easier. And then we have a list with a bar, so we end up with this. 
All right, so our end equality that we'll be trying to figure out is this is equal to this. Okay, so let's take a look here. First off, P will map to K. And then U will map to the list Q, L, M. Remember that lists are one object in themselves, so that's why the variable u can be mapped to that entire list. Uh, now we move on to tree. Tree is a constant, so r will be equal to tree. And then we have the variable book, or the uh, uh, constant book, so q will be equal to book. And then z will be equal to a list of n. And now since Q has been assigned a value, U will be equal to book L M. Okay, so these match. Uh, let's take a look. Ba -ba -ba, Q L M G book Z. Yep, so our simplification was correct. So Q is equal to book z is equal to a list of n, p is equal to k, u is equal to book lm, and r is equal to tree. All right. Okay, so I think that's it, guys. Uh, again, sorry about the length. I hope it helped. I hope that length helped. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, man, tongue twisters. I hope that length helped, I meant to say. Um, this uh, this stuff can be a little bit tricky, uh, especially with the bars. Just remember that bars represent the rest of a list, and they can take out one list that comes after them, and then they get replaced with a comma. Um, so yeah, feel free to subscribe. Uh, stay tuned for more videos on Prolog, uh, and uh, happy studying. <laughs>